now that ASU's added Jason on top of you and Charlie, um, and of course Kenny, wh what does that feel like uh, to just have like an all-star cast of high school coaches? And what what do you hope that to enable you guys to be able to accomplish? You know, it's uh, it's it's incredible working with these guys because. Um, we've had relationships for so long and so now you come to a familiar place and, and uh, we all have one goal in mind is, is for us to win. I think what people don't understand is that uh, it's pressure on our shoulders because um, we're Arizona guys that want to make um, Arizona State a prominent force in the college football world. Um, and so we're going to do everything we can not only to keep our kids here but also um, pressure to, to win because uh, if we can't I don't know what can happen but uh, um, but it's exciting times yeah it, does it feel like a like a reset and when you're the only holdover from the last I mean it's just got to be just an unbelievable whirlwind of emotional stuff that you've kind of been through yeah in recent weeks and months it has been a reset uh, a reset for good too um, you know, I'm excited to be back uh, in, in the running back room, but I'm also excited to help Coach Dillingham um, with any advice, suggestions, um, and, and help him because he's going to have so much on his plate. I think Coach Charlie does the same thing uh, as well. Coach Bull being a former head coach. And so I think we are better assistant coaches be because we've been there. So it has been a reset. The, only, the hard thing about it is that, you know, the relationships you've had prior to that um, um, with, with coaches leaving, that's been hard because you get to know their families. But at the same time, um, I, I've been excited about coming to work and I'm excited about building this in the, in the last 10 days, putting together this recruiting thing that uh, we all were crossing our fingers and how it played out. Um, and, and then going day by day trying to build this whole thing. So how much are you relied upon for an assessment of, of the returning roster and the players that you have? when you have to then go out and add 30 something players on top of that in such a short span with the new staff? You know, especially when we had to go over a roster and, and where people are at, you always have input because I'm the only one that really knows any of the, the guys. And so you put your input in. Um, they also have to make sure that they understand that uh, it's a clean slate for everybody because these are new coaches. But um, with the guys that we've added, uh, I, I think uh, spring ball is going to be exciting. I think. You know, these guys want to be here and be Sun Devils. They're, they're football guys. And so I think Coach Kenny has done a great job putting together a staff that are good men that are all football guys. And then making sure that we hold that over to our kids. So these kids that are coming to here are football guys. And so we're trying to build those, um, build those relationships and, and uh, get this thing going in the spring. Yeah, the... There's so much roster turnover everywhere. Um, there has been a lot at ASU. Um, what's that been like at your position, mm -hmm. specifically running backs? And you added uh, Cameron and DeCarlos. Uh, what, and what did they bring to the fold as part of that? It's been absolute craziness. I mean, this <laughs> transfer portal thing is absolute crazy. I, I never would have thought about it uh, being in the, in the football world, but that's the life we live uh, now. And, and adding those two guys to Tevin, who I think is going to be really special, um, um, brings that uh, competition to a new heights in that room. Uh, I think Tevin's going to be a special player. You know, he's one year more um, inclined in regards to the preparation and the way he goes about it. And then I bring in two guys that have been successful mm -hmm. that are football-loving guys, the same thing that with X and Rashad. Um, so that room is going to, be, uh, going to be up for competition, and uh, those guys will fight for it. Yeah, um, with Tevin, he's a big and athletic guy. Mm -hmm. um, he flashed quite obviously mm -hmm. um, compared to what you thought he would be as a recruit to what you saw in the first year. What, what was that like? You know, I, I thought he's everything that he is going to be. You know, and it people don't understand it takes time and, and from from that learning process. Um, and as soon as that uh, last game was done, he's he's back on track warming, and you know. He sent me a video because he's in the Bahamas right now with his uh, family, and he's jumping rope and running. So he know I know what he wants, um, and, and he'll fight for that too. And, and he has the God-given ability to do that. And I just love the person that he is. Now you're going to get two older guys that come in, and they're going to kind of compete. So it's up to whoever it is to win it. And I've always been in that um, predicament where I'm going to play the best guy. And you know sometimes people don't 
Uh, guys in the room don't like that because they think they are, but I'm always going to play the best guy. And it, over these years, it has always worked out um, and I've had productive guys. Mm -hmm. um, does Tevin remind you of anybody? That he kind of reminds me of Rashad a little bit. I was say that. You know, same body type, you know, same smiling, the whole deal. Um, now, last year, he's 18 years old. He's going to get bigger and better, um, yeah. but uh, he has a chance, a yeah. really good chance. Cameron, uh, I'm not saying he's the same, but he has some of the characteristics of X mm -hmm. in terms of like how you might utilize him or, yeah. or whatever, right? So, and he seems like an extremely tough, physical, hard-nosed guy on top of how productive that he was. So, wh like, why did you decide that he was the right person? To you know, work? when I went after uh, uh, guys in the portal and, and continually talked to them, they had to love football and play for something more than just you know, the accolades or whatever it was. And uh, um, those two guys, the Carlos and him, love football. They're tough suckers. They're mature for their age. They go about preparation and all they want to, they talk about is getting to the next level. But the most important thing they talked about is make, wanting to, the team to win. And so the, all those characteristics together, I thought uh, will fit this room because that room is just like that. And it and always been. And so I'm excited for that room. Given your experience at Chandler, what you've seen ASU like, um, and trying to make sure that you guys have the right culture foundation set for success, like what are some of the key things that go into that? You know, first of all, uh, with the coaches staff, bringing good men and good people um, that, that get along, that have one mission. The second thing, like I said before, bringing in football guys that want to play football because I think too many times uh, kids are enamored with all the social media stuff and they go on the wayside. They're not playing. They get uh, distraught. Um, then they want to transfer, all the, whatever it is. But the other thing is um, keeping Arizona kids, um, the top tier kids. You know, everybody wants us to recruit Arizona and we will do that wholeheartedly. But at the same time, we got to keep top, only the top tier kids. We can't be looked at as the second tier program. Um, and then fill our rooms with people around the country that we feel are the best fit for our room. For example, I have one running back, uh, I have one running back per year, either be it a freshman that's coming in. I want a Arizona kid, but if it's the kid is not good enough, I gotta go out and get the best kid, not only to make us successful, for me to keep my job. That, yeah. I mean, that's just the way it goes. I don't think people understand that. Uh, yeah, um, there's not a lot way. of years where a back might be better than Tevin White. Yes. In Arizona, Absolutely. but when there is, you he, you are gonna always want him. There's no question. You know the the Bijan Robinsons of the world. Yeah, right? everybody. Um, and now I voted for number three for the Heisman. So. Yeah, absolutely. And so uh, you know, it plays. And not the, the best back doesn't come from California. It comes from all over. And so, being an evaluator, you want to do your due diligence wherever they come from, and then they have to be a good fit here. And so there's so many factors involved.